Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Gun Show. We are super excited to be here today because for the first time ever, we're bringing a whole crew together to get excited for IMTS. The guests I have with me today, you may recognize them already, but I got Arthur, I got Megan, and then the man of the hour from oh, no. Heimbook is my buddy <laughs> Al, and we're going to talk all things IMTS. Some people call these guys superstars. I call them superheroes, and yes, I do mean that. They're all amazing. We actually have a great gift here from Thor slash Michael at Heimbook, and uh, what a great gift that was, but that's not the topic of today. Al, let's just get straight into it. We will be seeing you, the MTD CNC team, on Tuesday from 10 to 12 at IMTS. Your booth number is 431636. So I want everyone to go see Heimbook as well, but when we get there, what are we gonna see? Welcome back to the gun show, my friends. This is the VIP edition. Oh, that's going to be the grand unveiling of our brand new automation cell. And as everybody knows, Heimbook is, um, has always been known for flexibility, rigidity, um, repeatability. And now we're taking all that together and bringing in a robot. And we're changing entire chucks with a robot. So the same robot that you can change your parts with, you can um, change clamping heads with. We are the only company in the world that can change both end stops and clamping heads at the same time with a robot. No one else can do that. But where we're taking it to the next level, because of our repeatability, we have a system where we can change out entire chucks. And, and you've seen it. We can change out an entire chuck in five minutes or less. You've probably seen me do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> and you're a sales guy. <laughs> and so I know. <laughs> I wear a white shirt, too. <laughs> um, but we can now change out entire chucks, any, anyone's chuck, entire work holding um, with a robot. No one else in the world could do that. And the reason we can do that is because of the way our system repeats. Um, we can repeat to equal to, um, equal to or less than three microns of repeatability. So if you can have a um, lights out operation where you can do several different parts. You can go from OD clamping to ID clamping to three jaw chuck clamping um, with complete lights out operation and change out the entire chucks. Um, it's something no one else can do. And it's all because of our repeatability. So we're super excited about showing that. But then we're even taking it to another level because we're also going to have for the first time at IMTS um, our IQ chucks on display. So we've talked about this in the past, too. Our IQ chucks can, can measure right from the chuck, part diameter, part temperature, um, part confirmation to replace air sensing, where you, in the past you'd have to have plumbing coming through the, the back of the spindle with a rotary union and everything, um, just to have part confirmation to say, yep, that part's there, go ahead and clamp it. Now we can do that with embedded sensors in the chuck. So we can do part temperature, um, part confirmation, part diameter, clamping pressure, and even spindle speed if, if you need to know the spindle speed. So what that does is that eliminates preventive maintenance and takes it from preventive maintenance to predictive maintenance because now you have all this data coming right from the work holding. Of course, you can have data coming from the machine too, vibration sensors and everything. It, it just... It's part of Industry 4.0 to get as much data as you possibly can from a machine, and we're doing our part from the work holding, um, to, um, I mean, you can, you can make changes on the fly, you can make offsets, you can eliminate scrap, you can check part diameter. If you go from the main spindle and pass off a part to the subspindle, you can measure the diameter. And if it's wrong or going in the wrong direction, you can make changes. So we're going, to show, we're going to show the IQ chucks. We're going to show uh, changing both uh, loading and unloading parts, loading and unloading clamping heads with end stops on them too, which no one has done yet. Um, and then we're changing the entire chuck. So one of the reasons that that's important is because we do a lot of OD and a lot of ID clamping. We can change out clamping heads with a robot, and everybody can do that. Um, but no one can, can change out, including ourselves, we can't change out bushings or, or ID uh, mandrel sleeves on a chuck. So if you have to do different <laughs> diameters for um, ID clamping, 
you have to change out the entire chuck. We can do it. With, with this system, we can have several ID mandrels lined up where the robot can come and pick it up and change out the entire chuck to do different diameters. So we're going to show that. We're going to have stations in, in our booth with, um, with different top tooling for the robot, the different jaws that it's going to come and pick up its, its own jaws to do all the different operations. We're going to pick, pick up parts and clamp them. We're going to, uh, we have different chucks that are set in their nest so that um, the robot's got to know where to, where to go to get them and to load them. And at the same time, we're going to have data coming right from the work holding. At EBITDA Growth Systems, we guarantee to double your value in three years. Well, instead of telling you about a guarantee, how about if I tell you a story? We had a shop owner come to us at an event saying, I'm not sure if you can help us. He said, we have our credit lines maxed out in our business. I have a second mortgage on my home. It's maxed out. I'm not sure what to do. I have a payroll coming up next week, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. Can you help us? We said we weren't sure, so we came in, and we came alongside of him. In 18 months, he went from not having any money to having over $800,000 in the bank and having a six times exit what his value was at that day. And now he's living a life that he always dreamed of with his family. And it's fantastic. And that's what's really rewarding for us. And that's what EBITDA Growth Systems is all about. If you want to know more about EBITDA Growth Systems, go to www.ebitagrowthsystems.com, E-B-I-T-D-A growthsystems.com, and go to our contact page where I will reach out to you personally. I, I, I want to get author wow. Megan into this because I yeah. know that they have a lot of questions. You and I have spent <laughs> a lot of time together. I mean, firsthand, I've been to Germany. I've seen how all of this is done. I've done interviews with your customers who have saved a million dollars a year on back claims and injuries just on having to lift parts into the machine, sure. and that's been removed from your automation. We all love the fact that you're doing something that no one else is doing, and I believe it's going to be full sell set up, and we're ready to go on that Tuesday morning. So it just is. to give that little brief... I've been there, I love it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Let's get into author and Megan's questions because I know they're ready to ask. The thing I love is that one, we're gonna see this at IMTS at your booth on Tuesday because it a lot of manufacturing seeing is believing. Everything you're talking about is absolutely amazing and for people to actually be able to go up and watch these operations and actually conceptualize what it's gonna look like on their shop floors. Like Tony said, you know, it's saving their back, saving everything else, but man, that lights out operation you were painting in my mind when you're talking about the ability to change the chucks, to change the parts, to just keep it running. You can really take those high tech people, spread them to set up these operations and to plan out all the work, but now they can run so many more cells because they're not stuck. I mean, a chuck changeover used to tie up someone for a good couple hours with everything that was required. I mean, unless you have the quick change from, from Heimbuch already, then you know, you're like a five minute changeover, but the robot side of that means you don't have to pull that person off of whatever they're working. You can just set the robot up to do it. Once you know how to do it once, the robot's gonna do it repeatedly perfectly. They're never gonna miss a step. I'm just like, my brain is melting <laughs> over here. And on top of that, author, just for fun to, to add on to that, with everything being correct, yeah. this is a matter of, of seconds yeah. to, to minutes and less than three micron every time? I mean, yeah, are like, you kidding me right now? Yeah. How are you, that, is there an easy button over here we can hit for how amazing that is? <laughs> and, and what is downtime costing you? Yeah. That's right. what you have to take into consideration too, because downtime is very expensive. And you're right, if it takes four hours to manually change out a chuck, we'll say, to take out one chuck, put another chuck in, um, re-indicate it to check the run out for it. Um, I'm terrible at, at doing that myself, so it takes me 45 minutes just to um, dial in a chuck. Um, that, that's a lot of time, and that's costing you a lot of money. Al, I gotta be yeah. honest, I've been into a machine shop before where they bought a new machine so they wouldn't have to do that because yep. it took so long <laughs> to set it all back up again and re-indicate. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on that. I, I'm terrible with an indicator. I got fat fingers. Too, so. <laughs> but I think also, too, what's interesting about it, it's not just helping with downtime, but you know I'm so passionate about the workforce issues that we're having. It's going to actually help people who are having a hard time bringing in new talent to do all of those tasks. So I think that's in in decreased amount of time too, that's just amazing. So anyone that can't find the talent to come into their shops, they should definitely visit your booth because then maybe they can purchase something like this and incorporate it into their own shop floor and be more productive than they were before. That, yeah. That's yeah. a great comment. We have a current customer 
for our Centratex AC system, the one that can be changed with a robot, um, that has a backlog of 150 people, 150 operators that, that they've been trying to hire and they can't get them. Well, now they, they've bought several cells of our um, Centratex AC unit, the robots, loading and unloading parts, unloading and unloading chucks and, and mandrels um, because they can't find the people mm -hmm. and they have to, that's the direction they have to go. And, and plus, when you go from manual to automate it. There's no mistakes. Mm -hmm. That that repeats, the robot repeats just yeah. like, and we're all talking about repeatability all the time and accuracy and tight tolerances. So, um, you know, it doesn't take coffee breaks. It doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> like we are right now yeah. while talking about it. <laughs> That's right. Well, well I want to take this opportunity because we definitely still have some time left to go back to that IQ information yeah. because okay. I want Megan and Arthur to learn more about this. You and I have been on camera talking about this and, and the capacity of what it's actually able to do, it's even difficult for me to wrap my mind around because it is so daggone sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So, guys, ask, ask Al a couple of questions about that because it's one of those things that it's an onion. You have to peel it back to truly understand the significance of what it can do for a shop. Yeah, well, the question I have, right, when we're talking about that automation and then the changeover for the, the chuck and everything. So if I'm understanding you correctly, Al, then with the IQ sensors in place as well, once it does the changeover, you have an entire verification, like like a feedback loop, that when you know you put it on, the, the RPMs are going to be right, the temperatures are going to be where you expect. You have all these different checks and balances then that the IQ could check so you know a good changeover has occurred. Am I, am I getting that right? Um, de yes, definitely, especially with the um, embedded sensors in the end stops because okay. when you load the part, and you have a pullback chuck where you're pullbacking. So we're not only clamping radially, we have axial pullback to an end stop. Yeah. So you know when that part hits those sensors, it says, yep, go ahead and clamp it. Um, so you know when you change a part with a robot and you have sensors in the, the end stop, and you can follow along too. We're, we're doing clamping pressure as well. So you can watch the clamping pressure if, if it's either too much because we have some parts where we don't want to crush them yeah. and or if it's not enough you know that ahead of time and you can make changes or or you can do simple things like preventive maintenance or it's predictive maintenance now yeah. that I like to say where you can grease the chuck so you can verify everything and um, and, and Tony, you'll, you work with uh, machine monitoring companies too and we know some of the same ones um, a machine monitoring company can take this information, the data from the IQ chuck. It can make changes on the fly. Yeah. It's real-time information so that when you, um, you can graph it, you can save it. You have a report for every single part that's coming out that it, you can save. You can watch a part if the diameter's changing so you prevent scrap because you can make changes to save on scrap. Um, <laughs> It's just uh, if there's if the machine happens to have an event, a crash. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we um, you have a history of what the work holding was doing at that time of the crash too. Yeah. It's, so I information is power. The, the, the more information you have, the better you are, and especially if you're doing lights out operation with loading and unloading with robots, it's it, it's I don't know how we, you can do without it. It's it's an exciting time in the industry. And yeah. Megan, does it feel like this technology kind of goes back to your other point as well about finding workers, finding help, bridging that skills gap because it, it allows people to do things simpler and under, now we're not crushing parts from over. I mean, I can't tell you how many parts I've crushed because I thought tighter was better. And I can't tell you how many times the parts fallen out because I just crushed one and then I got nervous mm. that I didn't want to crush my second one. So I made it too loose and then right. a part goes flying out. So these, this intuitive system allows people to grasp manufacturing quicker, I would say. Yeah, I think so. And I think it would be easier for them to have that information so that you can do that cross training as well, too. So it's not just you're focusing on one aspect of the machine shop. So if like you have one person who is only that machine person and then they have to take vacation or if they get sick or if they have to go on maternity leave because I'm a mom, um, you don't have to retrain someone from the basics. They can actually start 
from where that person is and pick it up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think that information is really important because again, it's just so hard to find the right talent to come in. Hi everybody, <laughs> Amy Teal, CEO and co-founder of Shop Floor Coffee, proudly a women-owned business that's supporting the manufacturing community. Mike Franz, CIO, co-founder of Shop Floor Coffee. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in to check us out. Amy, tell us a little bit about Shop Floor Coffee. So we're here to give back to the manufacturing community through purchases of coffee. So every purchase you make, we donate a portion of those proceeds back to help workforce development initiatives. We can't tell you how much it means to us to help support the great manufacturing community. We've been involved with it for like 20 years and uh, we know there's issues around finding good people, finding people that really want to be involved in the industry and we want to start by giving back to that, giving back to the programs, getting kids involved with these awesome programs. There's robotics, there's computer software, there's so many cool things involved with the industry that people just aren't aware of. We want to help raise that awareness by giving back in a little way that we can. And really we came up with the idea of shop floor coffee because there are two complaints on a, sh on a shop floor. It's the coffee and the toilet paper. We can't do anything about the toilet paper, but we can help you get better tasting coffee on your shop floor while helping the community. So shopfloorcoffee.com, come visit us and, and support the community. Plus, instead of having an operator for every single machine, yeah. you can have an operator for six machines right. or for an entire automated cell. Yeah, and it, you don't have to necessarily be there on the shop floor either. I, 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 get, I bet there's like a remote observation it, thing that you can yeah. have on your phone or something. Is there? Oh, yeah, you know what? I, <laughs> I used to talk about this. So a long time ago, it seemed like in a high production facility, on, in front of the row of the machines, there'd be a big whiteboard. And every morning they'd have a, a production meeting and see how many good parts they made and how many, um, you know, bad parts, scrap parts and things like that. What machines were up, what machines were down. You don't need that anymore because now you can. Well, now you have an electronic monitor where you have this data. It, this data can be on a monitor in the engineering offices and it can go right to your cell phone, too. If there's an event, if something needs to be changed, um, you can do it. It's. And the machine monitoring companies that take this data, um, it's amazing what they can do. They, they've been, I think, they've been starving for data because they've had the technology to, to work with data all along. And, and now we're just doing our part to give them more. And everyone else is doing something somewhat similar too to get data. That's Industry 4.0. It's Industrial Internet of Things. It's all coming together. What an exciting time. Well, it, it is, is to be in the industry. Yeah. It's more accurate data, too, because it takes out that human error. Exactly. And if you're like me and you're not so good with numbers, I know some of those numbers had to be like estimates or something or yeah. you got the wrong number. So um, I think that it's just a great opportunity. Yeah. And if you had the whiteboard and people had poor penmanship, God forbid, <laughs> you could actually, is that a four? Or yeah. a five? Oh, oh, yeah. or, or <laughs> does that decimal point belong here yeah. or there? Oh, don't get me started yeah. on decimal points. <laughs> I, I've been on the shop floor looking at one of those whiteboards, calling the guy from the night shift because, man, what did you leave? I can't read this. <laughs> but the, the thing I really love about all the data and everything else is it's, it has the potential to also attract people that maybe don't want to do the manual labor of machining. They're interested about the robotics and the programming and the data. Maybe they're working in computer sciences or programming and that kind of stuff or robotics and they haven't seen a bridge and, and companies like Heimbook bringing this technology, you know, with the IQ sensors and the uh, robotic changeovers and the lights out manufacturing turns this way more into a game situation where this, these people can have fun with it. Oh, I don't have to hurt my back. I don't have to cut myself up. I can automate this. I can tackle this from a whole different point of view. And now with that, those advancements in technology, the stuff that we're going to see at your booth at IMTS, that all becomes possible. They can just make yep. it into a big game for themselves. Yep. Perfect. Any closing and, statements as we're, we're running out on time? Uh, and I know uh, you and I could spend another hour and a half here, which I'd love to do, to be fair. Any closing statements before we, so we could wrap this up? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so, say. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just quickly, um, you know, everything we have for turning, we have to hold round parts for stationary applications as well with quick change and zero point clamping, which are 
Centratex that we're changing is like a zero point clamping system for the lathe. Um, the next thing is um, our uh, grand unveiling, 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. Come by, have coffee in Danish, and uh, come meet everyone. Uh, we'll have CEOs from Germany there. Um, it's just going to be an exciting time. Everybody's welcome. Please come. Are you going to do the delicious waffles again like you did at Emo? No, that um, <laughs> because it's it's a little bit different in Chicago okay. on, on having to do that. But we were ha we're having it catered for coffee and Danish on the grand unveiling on uh, on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Tuesday so, at 10 o'clock, yeah? Get there at 9 o'clock first. And have <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday at 10 o'clock, booth number 431636. MTDC and C will be there as well. We want to see you. Al, thank you so much for your time Thanks. today. Thank Megan, you. author, you're both incredible as well. Thank, thank you, you for joining me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.